another old demon speed control sent to me from someone in Germany who are putting together their old car back together. Uh, this is a demon 2DH. Uh, how do we know that? Well, I recognise it, but it's actually got a uh, demon uh, 2DH etched on the circuit board. Um, they say uh, the reverse brakes aren't working, which was uh, the two power transistors here, and it's normally one of them blows out, which does the reverse and the brakes. Sometimes the relays fail, but not that often. And uh, I can see this <laughs> this uh, reverse power transistor here. It's literally got a hole, uh, hole blown in it. This power transistor here, it's got a hole blown in it. Now that would have been a uh, TIP36 at the time, and later on a BD250. I do actually have still a load of the original uh, transistors I used at the time, 36As and also the tip uh, 35 or BD249 used on the other side so I've still got plenty of them and you can still buy uh, tip 36 is now so what year was this made? well on the circuit board gives you a clue it's got the date 1985 I started making speed controls from about 78 I still have some of the original documentation I used went through quite a few speedos from the beginning uh, this one 984 and then later 87, 88 and into the 90s I still got some of the circuit diagrams uh, this is the 2, 2D which became the 2DH uh, originally he just had a uh, reverse and then it had uh, a forward power uh, relay added <laughs> there's my original layout times two side PCB side and the, the other side 1985 and I've got plenty of other uh, bits and bobs from that era now this one um, it's got the aluminium wrap round uh, heat sinks here's the original drawing I made uh, ordered a thousand of those bent plates to be put on the speedos which shows how many were made uh, and not many have survived <laughs> that was written on the back of the original uh, Demon 1 dated 1970, 1978 it says down there now um, I've got a, an, an original one here as well slight differences for some reason uh, uh, these pots have been changed uh, these weren't brilliant you could break them if if you kept people turn them round all the way around 360 they're not meant to go 360 so they were uh, broken quite easily if you twisted them too hard for setting the neutral and, and the relay operation uh, so someone's uh, managed to fit some replacement ones in there. The ICs which are no lo longer made rarely go wrong. The NE544, uh, you can't buy them anymore, though I do have a stock of them. And they are dated, this one's dated 1984. The one that was sent to me is dated 1986. To fix this I changed this power. Uh, transistor um, check out anything else I've unsoldered the blown transistor and now you can see it's got a hole, hole blown in it where it's shorted and blown well, it's a part, I just use a standard analog uh, resistance meter I'll, ju I'll just check the other transistor to make sure it's not blown you can check like that and make sure there's some diodes that could have blown out as well. They're all fine. Tip 36. The modern one is a very square looking thing. Uh, but a very good HFE so it gives good performance. Compared to the old ones, uh, the original one was very rounded on the top. Uh, then it had got a little bit squared off. And then this one is uh, quite a bit more chunky <laughs> looking. I guess, I mean this used to be in heat shrink so you couldn't really see 
the transistors but if you wanted it to match uh, the original one I'd have to use that one. So I'm ready to test the unit now if it's reassembled it uh, and put the little heat sinks back. Now I'm going to use a servo tester in place of transmitter receiver which is just fine, it's much easier and the power supply is current limiting so just in case there's a fault it doesn't uh, blow up and burn everything out and so I apply the power. Now there are two parts here, the inner one is neutral and the outer one is the gain and the gain one will adjust when you're on full forward or back to make the relays operate. First of all you've got to make sure that in the middle position of your transmitter, neutral, uh, that neither of the relays are operated. Luckily you can hear them and see them. So you can uh, hear and see them at the moment. So with this set at uh, neutral, I turn it slowly one way and you've got that relay operating the other way, the other one. Now if it's too sensitive, it operates too early, you need a bit of movement before it operates. Uh, you can back off the sensitivity, this part. It's actually easier, to, once you've got it like that, uh, to adjust it with the motor connector, which I'm going to do next. And to test this, I used a little uh, Mabuchi 280 motor, as the power supply can't uh, deliver enough amps to do the big one. I can test it later. Just make sure that it's working, make sure it's set up. So, um, you don't know which way is forward and reverse. You might need neutral reverse, but anyway, we'll check it. Got the power supply on. Turn this forward. Now that relay chattering is because of the noise uh, from the motor. It wouldn't normally do that, so you should have a capacitor on it. Now, for the full reverse, <laughs> it won't give enough power from the power supply, but it is working. So, and you can check the brakes. So, with a, uh, a proper NICAD or LiPo, we'll be able to test it now uh, at full power. Here's an old demon uh, lipo, <laughs> 5,000 milliamps 20C <laughs> from some years ago. That'll do. Anyway, so make sure it's connected up right. We've got the uh, more powerful brush motor, for about the sort of motor you'd be using at the same time in the uh, 80s. So, uh, make sure it's connected up right. No problem. And uh, let's see how we get on. That really shifts, doesn't it? And in reverse. See the reverse relay dropping out. So it's working fine. Um, the customer will have to adjust, uh, probably adjust the neutral to his transmitter. These get hot when you're doing a lot of reverse. Not meant for modern cars, obviously, just nostalgic uh, cars from the era. Use the same sort of brush motor. I put it in some black heat shrink. Um, it does cover over the metal <laughs> heat uh, sink plates. The original one only had um, a heat sink plate wrapped right around the back didn't have the one at the front so somebody has uh, uh, put two on this one which does improve the heat sinking, uh, get, dissipating the heat better but it makes it a bit awkward uh, for heat shrinking it up and you have to cut a little flap out at the front so that you can access the two potentiometers inside just to adjust it your transmitter, if your transmitter doesn't have any adjustments on it itself, which in the olden days they didn't have much adjustment on the transmitters, 